Now, instead of counting the number of trials required for obtaining your first success, you might be interested in counting the number of trials required before you record R successes. So here we have a new parameter value, R. The PMF for this situation, again, assuming we're working with independent Bernoulli trials here, the PMF will look as follows. You'll notice right off the bat that in order to obtain R successes, you need to have run the experiment at least R times. You can't have R successes if you have fewer than R trials. The probability of R successes, that would be P to the R, makes sense. The probability of X minus R failures, the other ones, failures, so right, we have X minus R failures plus R successes, that gives us a total of X trials. And now there is one difference with the geometric distribution is we do not necessarily know in which order the failures and the successes have occurred. The only thing that we know is that on the X throw, it's got to be a success, right? The probability of having R successes in exactly X throws requires you to have a success on the last throw, on the X throw. What this means is that amongst the first X minus one trials, you have to have exactly R minus one successes and the remaining trials have to be failures, right? So you can place the successes and the failures anywhere you want. Here we would be looking at four successes. Anywhere you want, as long as the last one is a success, you, know, you have three successes to place amongst the one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, seven trials, minus one, six trials, right? Because that last trial has to be a success. So here we have X minus one trial, which in this case be seven minus one trials. And there's gotta be R minus one, which would be four minus one successes. So in effect, there are X minus one, choose R minus one ways for you to place R minus one successes amongst X minus one trials, making sure that that last trial is a success which is why you get this binomial coefficient. So this distribution is a generalization of the geometric distribution, right? If R is equal to one, if you're looking for one success, then this would be X minus one, this would be one, R minus one would be zero, and anything choose zero is one. And so we recover the geometric probability mass function in that case. We'll denote this by neg bin PR. P is the probability of success for each of your independent Bernoulli trials. R is how many successes you want. And in this case, your expectation will be R divided by P, which is R times the expectation of the geometric distribution. And the variance will be R times one minus P, the probability of failure, divided by the square of the probability of success, which is, again, R times the variance of the geometric distribution. So let's go back to the six-sided die example. Let's say you want to throw it until you've rolled three sixes. What's the probability that you will require five throws? Well, in this case, X is equal to five, P is still equal to one over six, and R is equal to three. And you just need to substitute these values into the probability mass function. There's your x of five, is your r of three, x minus one, r minus one, and the p-value, or the value of p, I should say, not the p-value, that means something else that we we'll talk about later when we talk about statistical tests. The value of p is one over six, so this is five over six, this is one over six, and you get about well, two percent, that's the probability. The challenge here is to recognize what the distribution is. Because once you've recognized that this is a negative binomial distribution, the rest of the problem is easy. You just need to substitute specific values into the probability mass function. In that example, how many throws would you expect to need in order to roll three sixes? 
Well, it would be R divided by the probability of success, 3 divided by 1 over 6, 18. It makes sense, right? I mean, on average, you would expect every roll to be as likely as every other roll, so it should take you on average 6 rolls to roll any of the numbers, including a 6, and you want to throw 3 6s, well, it should take you on average 3 times 6, 18 rolls.